tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, the battle of man against the elements, of man against man. Thirty minutes of flight into the world of action and danger, where every minute is a call to adventure. These are the moments when a life hangs on the twist of a chance. The moments of escape. to the wildest mountains of Idaho and the story of love and murder in the midst of a raging forest fire as Anthony Ellis tells it in The Red Forest. It had taken me five years, three months, and four days. It had carried me across 21 states. And then in the Clearwater country of Idaho, I'd found it. That was in the afternoon. The trail had led from a lumber town along a washboard road and into the forest. I'm no woodsman, but in the daylight I found the place. And then I started back to the car. But something was different. Maybe the late sun red through the trees, maybe tall shadows. There wasn't a trail anymore, only streams where there hadn't been before. Trees that were the same, but weren't. And sounds. Sounds that were fun when you were a kid on a hike, but now scared you. I used my last cigarette three or four hours before, and it was then that I, that I started to run. Run. And the fear grows until you want to scream and want the ground to open up for you, warm and safe. But it didn't. And now, there was only the dry whirring of a rattlesnake, coiled inches away from me. No! I lived then, maybe because the snake was more afraid of something else than me. It didn't strike. Just slithered away and became the pattern of the leaves. It was nearly dark when I found the road. I'd come to it about a half a mile below where I'd parked the car. Half hour later, on the outskirts of the little town, my headlights picked up a girl standing on the side of the road. She carried a cheap paper suitcase, and she was thumbing a ride. I stopped. Can I get a ride, mister? What, sure. Ah, here. I'll put your case in the back. There we go. Gee, I'm lucky. Not many cars on the road tonight. Uh-huh. Been walking long? Uh-huh. I'm on my way to Missoula. My last ride dropped me a mile or so back. Yeah? You live around here? No. No. I, I don't guess you'd be going as far as Missoula. Well, sure. Gee, that's swell. <laughs> I got a job there starting tomorrow. Kind of broke, if you know what I mean. Buses cost money. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mind if I smoke? No, 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 of course not. Go right ahead. Hey, your face. What? You, you've been hurt. So, scratched up. Oh, well, uh, I, I was hunting. I got lost just the other side of town. Uh, if you want to take a nap, it's okay. We've got about a hundred miles to go. Guess I look pooped, huh? Yeah. I'm not kidding. I am. Say you're all right, mister. I'll take you up on it. Some guys, the minute you get in, want more than the bus fare. I can see you're not that kind. You'll be safe. I'll wake you when we're at the city limits. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh. <laughs> Gee, it's nice out here. It's kind of lonely. It smells good. I wonder what that is over there. What? The sky. Bright light, see? I don't know. Gee, it could almost be Seattle. Long way off. I had a boyfriend. He used to take me driving at night. When we came back, you could see a glow. Just like that. 
Oh. I saw that glow in the sky. It was on our right. And as the road twisted through the trees, it fell behind us and to our left and circled until it was straight ahead. The girl had fallen asleep very quickly. I saw her face in the light from the dash. Thin, pretty, peaceful. And it was about 15 minutes after I picked her up that I saw the lights on the road. And then closer, the figures waving. Hey, they're all ready. I, I just got to sleep. No, there's something wrong. There's a cop coming this way. Uh, what's the trouble? Plenty. We want you, mister. Want me? Yeah. Forest fire. Bad one. We've got to have every man we can find. Uh, someone else in the car with you? I, yes, sir. Girl. Good, she can help. Uh, look, I, I'd like to very Here's much. the forest ranger. He'll explain. Well, I'm awfully sorry, but you see, I'm on my way to Missoula. Not and... tonight. I got authority to do this, mister. I'm sorry, but we need you. Well, I... Now, you I... couldn't get much further anyway. The road's cut off. Mountain's going up like a torch. If it's spread, there's three towns going, too. Come on, I got some clothes and boots for you. Hey, what about me? I gotta get to Missoula. I got a job in the morning. Sorry, sister. You got a job serving coffee here. You cop. Five dollars a day. A day? Or longer, it depends. Come on, let's go. There was nothing else to do, so I got into the clothes the ranger gave me, then stood around and waited. I wasn't tired anymore, just scared. Scared of going into that forest again. The wind came up a bit, and with it, the smell. Smell of burning. Smell of death. A long way off, but closer than the glow had been, we could see flickering against the sky. And it was in a lot of places. Suddenly, it was too warm and too quiet. All right, you guys. The telephone's burnt out. I made contact with a short wave set. Hey, you, mister. What? What's your name? Uh, Pendell. Pendell? Yeah. You ever use one of these? Walkie-talkie? Uh, sure, I was in the signal corps. Okay, and you'll carry it. Now, listen. This is bad. Real bad. The fire's got behind us. We can't get any more men through for several hours. they got to come around from the other side, and that's 30 miles. What's the use, then? Let's get out. Hey, Crowbar. Yeah? I'm putting you in charge. You know what to do. Get in as close as you can to the river and set a backfire. Sure. i got to stick here with the transmitter. You take the walkie-talkie, and I'll let you know what's happening. Sure. You stay here with the pretty girl. We go and get fried. Shut up, that. Hey, Hanson, you'll have to go with them. Three's not enough. Sure. Well, the cops could do some work for a change. You better take along some food and a thermos. Come on. Step on it. Too bad we got the a couple of sandwiches I made up here. <laughs> Thank you. It sure is something, isn't it? Yeah. You scared? Scared? Why? Your face is white. You scared? I'm from the city. I know what you mean. Those trees give me the willies, too. Dark. Sure. That's it. You'll be all right. Listen, kid. If uh, anything happens... You take my car. Here are the keys. What do you mean? If I don't come back, keep the car. You kidding? You're coming back. Yeah, sure. So long. Hey, my name's Jan. What's yours? Wally. You be careful, Wally. We went into the forest. Men with spades. Men against fire and terror. There was the man they called Fat. 300 pounds of ungainly body, topped by a tiny and almost disgustingly childlike face. There was Crowbar, a big, dark man, quiet and filled with the knowledge of the woods. Hanson, the state trooper, thin and wiry, his natty khaki shirt stained with sweat and dirt. And me. We'd gone about a mile when we first heard it. It came in gusts with the wind high above us. Wait a minute. Holy... Shut up. Let's get out of here. About uh, three miles away. I, I think it's coming fast. We're about that far from the river, aren't we? Yeah. Listen, you guys, if it's across the river, we're sunk. Let's get out. Hey, Wally. Yeah. Get the ranger. Tell him it's coming this way pretty fast. Right. Look, look, sparks up there. See? Sure, up at sparks, fire. You Hello. Chicken? Oh, Leo. Hello. Pendell calling Roe. Pendell calling Roe. Over. Roe. This is Roe. Over. We're still about three miles from the river. We can hear it. Over. You can't set a backfire now. Wind's changed. You better come back. Over. Right. Well, he says go back. That's okay with me, boys. Come on. Gee, let's 
I wanted to run again, that same feeling I'd known before, the fear all around us, closing in and down. There was no sky above, only blackness tinged with red, pressing. And behind, the living forest running, overtaking and passing us. When we reached the road again, the sound was steady. I had a strange feeling of relief when I saw the forest ranger and the girl, Jan. It was like coming home. I think it was then that I... Stop being afraid. Come on, Ro. We can't do no good now. Yeah, you're not kidding. We've got to try and join up with the others. What do you mean? Well, the fire's on three sides of us. That means we head southeast. Well, can't we take the road back? Nope. There's 200 men trying to keep a path open for us. We've got to make five miles in a hurry. Bad as that. Yeah, worse. If we don't get there in time and they can't make a fire break, we're going to be smack in the middle and there's not going to be any way out. Our country faces a critical problem, excessive hoarding and purchasing by thoughtless people. Panic buying is senseless buying. It helps no one and creates situations which are as dangerous as they are unnecessary. The American Grocery Manufacturers Association reports that we have a surplus of 450 million bushels of grain. Stocks of lard are 189 million pounds above what we had last year. Production of vegetable oils is above the average of the last 10 years. Quantities of fresh and canned vegetables are 10% above normal. Supplies of sugar are 950,000 tons above last year's figure. There's a surplus of eggs growing at the rate of 15 million dozen every month. The only shortages are temporary local shortages, so don't help to create them. The good citizen is the thoughtful consumer. Buy what you need, don't deny yourself the things to which you're accustomed, but don't take somebody else's share. You'll buy what you need... If you need what you buy, the size of your shopping bag is a test of your allegiance to your country. Now we return you to... Escape. We didn't carry anything but canteens. It was hot, and because it was hot, it made you thirsty even when you didn't need water. The going was rough, and we could only head in what we thought was the general direction of safety. It was at the ridge that... We've lost the first man. <coughs> the wind's changing again, Crowbar. Uh, which way? I can't tell. It's haywire with this fire. Do we go straight ahead? Might as well. Oh, wait a minute. See that ridge? <laughs> yeah. Now, why don't I get up there? It shouldn't take more than ten minutes, and I'll be able to get a better look. Give me the flash, and I'll signal to you. I don't know. We haven't got much of a start. Ours behind us, and a lot faster. Well, it's better than walking toward it. Remember, it's on three sides. Okay. You make it fast, Cobar. Sure. Good luck. What do we do? Just sit and wait? Yeah, that's right. Listen, you're the ranger. Why don't you go? What do you send Crowbar for? He's fought fires before, and he knows. He's a better man to climb up there. He's faster than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, kid. Kid, are you okay? Sure, well, he's just fine. Guess I'm not used to walking, though. These high heels don't help. Yeah. Take it easy, huh? Mm-hmm. My feet feel like they did once at a dance I went to. Some big lunt climbed all over me. Guess you won't have a job in Missoula, huh? If I get out of this, that's all I care about. Yeah, it's tough. I'm scared. Give me a hand, will you? She held onto my hand tight. It wasn't the darkness that frightened her now. There wasn't darkness anymore, but a yellowish red light that came from everywhere. It was another kind of fear. Fear of something you you could see, hear, and with every minute feel more and more. I only waited there ten minutes. Eleven, twelve. And then... Did you hear something? Yeah. It seemed to come from over there. From the ridge, maybe? Maybe. Listen, you you think something got crowbar? A lion or something? I'll go up. No, Fendel. What do you mean, no? No time. We've waited too long now. Oh, but he may be hurt. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> It'll take you longer than it took Crowbar to get there. Now, come on. Uh, you couldn't find him in the dark? Who says he's hurt anyway? We'll move on and he'll catch up. I say we go after him. <laughs> Not me. I'll put it to a boat, but hurry up now. Hanson. We go on. All right, Pat. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And I say go on. That leaves you messing. I'm staying with Wally. All right. I'll go with you. We 
never saw Crowbar again. Maybe a lion got him. Maybe he got lost. We never saw him again. The ranger went ahead, finding trails somehow, keeping us moving. We began to climb, and after a while, we were on another ridge. For the first time, we could see the fire. It stretched out for miles like a huge red sea. It was all around us. Oh, gee, Wally. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Well, it hurt much. I don't know. Hey, hey, hey take a breather. I'm going to try the walkie-talkie again. He's not scared, is he? I guess not. Is that because he's a ranger? Or because he's very brave? You're a funny girl. No, I'm not. Hey, give me a kiss, will you? Sure. Why did you want me to do that? I don't know. You're a nice fella. I miss you. Listen, Janet. I want to tell you something. What? (laughs) If we get out, maybe. Yeah? Look, I'm all right. I mean, we could have fun together. I know. I, uh... I did something wrong once. I... I killed a man. Why? He framed me. <laughs> Got me put away for something I didn't do. We were driving in the east and ran over a woman. He was at the wheel, but... <laughs> he took a powder and left me. But he didn't do it. That's what I say, but... i had been <laughs> drinking and went to sleep. When I woke up, I was behind the wheel. He put me there. That's how the cops found me. I got five years. Oh. I was married. My wife killed herself. Ashamed, I guess. I lost my job and my friends. I swore I'd get my pal, and I did. He was a louse. He knew I was after him and ran, but I caught (coughs) caught up with him. I don't care. Don't you? I, I don't know why I told you that. Maybe because if we do get out... Sure. I know. I know. It's okay. Come on, Pendell. The ranger's moving off. It was the state trooper, Hanson. I wondered how much he'd heard, but there wasn't any time to worry then. Roe thought he'd seen a break in the fire, and we headed for it. When we got down in the trees again, I began to get a feeling that I'd been there before. It was nothing I could recognize, just a feeling. And then a couple of hundred yards that long, I knew why. Hey, hold up. There's a shack. <laughs> Looks like someone's living there. <laughs> Better have a look. Door's open. Hey. hey. It's a man. All right, give me a hand. Sure. <laughs> hey, he's being shot. Yeah. A few hours ago from the looks of it. <laughs> you think the man who did this might have started it? What do you mean? The fire. It started a few miles north of here. We figured somebody got careless with a match. Eh, maybe the killer running away. <coughs> I'd like to get the fellow that did that. Maybe I will. Yeah, me too. Well, we can't do anything here. Come on. From there on, nobody talked. It was hard enough to lift your feet. Jan was nearly through, and I half carried him. If Roe knew where he was leading us, he didn't say. We followed and knew that sooner or later we'd stop because we were too tired to go on. That was the first. Listen, fellas. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh, you got to go on. There's still a chance. No, we're back. Just, just for a minute. No. Get up. Please, please, one minute. That's all. Get up. No, I can't. I can't. Okay. Do the thing. No, no. But come on. But I tell you, I can't. I'm sorry. You catch up to us and stay on the floor. No, no. All right, come on, Jack. We're going to leave him. No, we have to. No, please don't leave him. I'm coming. Oh, please, please, please. Can we help him? Oh, we're almost dead ourselves. I don't know whether it was because none of us liked him or because we knew that we couldn't do anything. It's funny how you can lose a man and know he's going to die and put him right out of your mind. Perhaps we wanted to live so badly we figured the fire would take time out from us to attend to him. 
Hanson was next. I'm, I'm finished. No, you're not. Just a bit more to go. We can still get through. No. No, you go ahead. Save the girls. I'm sorry. I, go I, on. Maybe I can catch up. Hey, I got a rest. You. Wally. Uh, do me a favor. <laughs> what? I lost my gun somewhere. You know what I mean? It'll be quicker that way. You got one? Yeah. Here. Thanks. One bullet fired, huh? That's all I wanted to know. Okay, Pendell. I've had enough rest. I can keep up with you now. Feel a little safer with this on me. Go ahead. So he knew. I didn't care now. I was too tired to care. If he wanted to play cop, that was his business. Sure, the man in the shack was Lenny Gillen. Sure, I'd kill him. It was my match on that last cigarette when I was lost. It must have started this fire, but it wasn't important anymore. Right now, I wanted to get Jan out of it. Get myself out. What was that? It's behind us. It sounded like Hanson. Uh, come on. What's going to be? No, he must have fallen. Can I help him? In no time. Not you. We didn't help Pat. Why him? I don't know. Please. All right, stay here. Hanson! Hanson! Keep calling, Hanson! Okay. My leg. Can you get up? Oh, my leg. Broken, I guess. Yeah. You know about me, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Girl knows, too. I heard, I heard you telling her. She won't say anything. No. No, I guess not. Gillen had it coming to him. I wouldn't know. I'm a cop. Yeah. Getting hot. Put your arm over my shoulder. You can't get me up there. Well, I can try. Now, come on. Come on. Hey. Oh. 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 No good. We can't make it. I'll get the ranger. I'll come back. No. No time. Go on. No. I... Get out of here. No, I can't. Go on. I've got your gun. Nobody will ever know. You, you can get away with murder. Hanson, I'm sorry. Go on, get out of here. Somehow I made it up the trail again. I thought I had a shot up. Maybe it was a burning tree going down. Jan was waiting for me and we went on until the trees began to thin out. And we heard the shots of men. I didn't remember anything else because I passed out for a long time. When I woke up, Jan was sitting by my bed. And it was cool again. Jan. Did they get Hanson out? No. Jan. Hmm? Listen to me. About what I told you back there. You know, the man I killed. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sorry. I, I mean, it was all right about him. But not Hanson, Crowbar. In fact, that was my fault. You know that. Yeah. Well... I want you to call a cop. <laughs> Listen, kid, I've been dreaming about it. It's no good now. Be a good kid and call a cop, will you? I don't have to. There's one outside now. What do you mean? When you passed out, I guess you were delirious or something. You told them. I told them? Oh, that's good. 
That's good. Oh, I'm glad. You want me to hang around? Well, I... That's up to... Up to you, I guess. I guess it is. I'll hang around. Each year, thousands of Southern Californians contribute to the pension and sick and injured funds of the Sheriff's Relief Association. You can do your share for this deserving organization by attending the Sheriff's Annual Rodeo in the Los Angeles Coliseum on August 27th. Cowboy star Roy Rogers and Trigger will head the great array of talent on this thrill-packed show. June Haber has been selected as Rodeo Queen, and Joel McRae will act as Grand Marshal. There will be exhibitions of roping and riding by champions from all over the country and a thousand other exciting events at the Sheriff's Annual Rodeo, the greatest spectacle of its kind in the world. It's at the Los Angeles Coliseum, 2.30 Sunday afternoon, August 27th. It's a treat the whole family will enjoy. And don't forget the date, Sunday, August 27th. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. And tonight has presented The Red Forest by Anthony Ellis. Featured in tonight's cast were Gl- Georgia Ellis as Jan, Bill Conrad as Wally, Paul Fries as Hanson, Ben Wright as Roe, Jay Novello as Fat, and Will Gear as Crowbar. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week. You're in the middle of the most barren desert of Mexico watching a wealthy Oriental voluntarily being strangled to death by the priests of his strange religion, dangerous, fanatic priests, from whom there is, for you also, no escape. Next week at this time, CBS invites you to escape with an exciting story of a man trapped by the priests of a weird cult in the desert wastes of Mexico, as Governor Morris tells it in The Footprint. Be listening. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. For radio entertainment at its best, keep tuned to your CBS station. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.